In the headlines, bandits attacked on Gaza in Sokoto State, killed two, abduct four children. Kaduna State Government confirms killing of community leader in Lere local government area. Scores of bandits killed as abducted major at NDA finally regains freedom. Another foreign scene, drone attack killed 10 civilians in Kabul, United States acknowledges. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Aisha Salihu. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. We we'll begin with bandits have reportedly attacked Tangaza town in Tangaza local government area of Sokoto State, killing two and abducting four children. According to sources, they also injured another three people who are currently receiving treatment in the hospital, while foodstuffs, drinks, among others, were reportedly carted away. One of the sources in the town said the suspected bandits launched the attacks after evening prayers on Friday and began to shoot sporadically, killing a shop owner on the spot and a young girl who died in the hospital. Efforts to get the reaction of the command public relations officer, ASP Sanusi Abubakar, was not successful. In Kaduna State, the government on Friday confirmed killing of a community leader, al Haji Abubakar Abdullahi, in Lere local government area of the state. In a statement by Samuel Arwan, Commissioner, Minister of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Kaduna State, the government was being briefed, has been briefed on the killing of the community leader. According to the statement, al Haji Abdullahi was abducted by unknown gunmen who invaded his home in Lere in the early hours of Friday and was shot dead by his captors along a highway shortly after. Governor Nasser al rufai has expressed sadness at the report of the killing of al Haji Abdullahi and sent his commiserations to the family of the deceased. Tragedy strikes in the Mabushi Banex Expressway in the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja on Saturday as a yet-to-be-identified man is killed by two hit-and-run drivers. Trust TV reports that the victim was making an attempt towards crossing the expressway when the first driver, who was on a high speed, hit him and the second driver rammed into him again off the road. The two drivers are said to have sped off immediately after the incident for fear of being arrested by the police or linked by angry mob. Meanwhile, efforts by the sympathizers to rig the police about the incident proved abortive as the police and FRC emergency lines were unanswered. The situation compelled them to take the body to a nearby mosque for burial. One can hit you, you know, stop the other one. One hit you, one hit you. For inside your head. After that, you never stop. You don't think my woman like them. Because it's a problem. You know, all of them are wrong. It's all there. Two cars. That is the only problem. We in a, we in a help us. Because it's a woman being like us. Nobody knows to move. That's why we just stay and to help. Major C.L. Datong, who was kidnapped during an attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna State by bandits last month, has finally regained freedom. It is reported that some gunmen suspected to be bandits broke into the Nigerian foremost military school on August 24, kill, killed officers and abducted Major C. Elder Tong. The abducted major has been in the kidnappers then till he was rescued on Friday. Deputy Director, Army Public Relations 1 Division, Nigerian Army, Colonel Ezindu Idima, who confirmed the development, said the Tong was rescued by troops. According to him, the operations leading to his rescue led to the destruction of several identified bandit camps in Africa, burning Gwari areas of the state, revealing that scores of bandits were killed during the operation. President Muhammadu Buhari has described football as a great tool for national unity in the country. Restating his government's resolve to develop the game, he said this when he received the FIFA delegation led by its president, Gianni Infantino, and the president of Confederation of African Football, Patrice Mosefe, at the State House in Abuja. President Buhari explained that the country is giving adequate attention to sports and has set up a committee to draw a 10-year plan for football. Nigeria is a great country. Nigeria is a fantastic country. I'm happy to be back home here in Nigeria. I feel home because I feel the warmth of your welcome, of the welcome of all the Nigerian people whose heart is beating for football and for whom football means 
so much. Holy welcome to State House, the FIFA delegation led by President Sigmo Gianni Infantino and Vice President Dr. Patrice Motepe. We appreciate the enormous work done by your organization in the development of football, using it as a tool for positive social change and to drive global unity. Football has been one of the greatest sources of unity in our country. I dare say in many parts of the world. Our hearts beat as one time our teams are playing a football match. Our youth are always positively engaged when our football teams are on assignment. Without any doubts here, football is a major tool of national unity. FIFA, as the governing body of the world's number one sport, football, and with about 211 member associations, is positioned as one of the most important organizations in the world, and its leadership under Gianni Infantino deserves huge commendations for the amazing efforts at genuinely driving global unity, positive social change, and the right kind of engagement for the mass of our youth. Nigeria is the leading black nation in the world, and as such, we are very central to all that FIFA is seeking to achieve in its football development plan. Nigeria loves football, and we follow the game passionately. The House of Representatives has urged the federal government to urgently intervene to protect the people of Jigawa and other states of the Federation from further death as a result of the cholera outbreak. This followed a motion brought by Honorable Abubakar Maki Yaleman calling on the federal government to curtail the spread of cholera in Jigawa State and amended to include any other state of the Federation suffering from the outbreak. The lawmaker in his presentation noted that within one month of the cholera outbreak, the state had recorded over 2,000 cases of the disease and over 30 deaths has been recorded too, thus causing a financial burden on the state government as all its resources have been channeled to addressing the disease. The Federal Minister of Health, among others, are to manage outbreak of diseases in Nigeria, formulate policies on all activities relating to diseases management and coordinate the plans and programs for efficient and effective response to disease to disaster at all levels of government while making concrete effort to cater for the health need to Nigeria. The House also note that within one month of the cholera outbreak, the state has recorded over 2,000 cases of the disease and over 30 deaths, those causing financial burden on the state government as all its resources have been channeled to address the disease. Worry that Malamodori Kaugama Federal Constituency is surrounded by water which aided the spread of cholera, a waterborne disease, those calling for intervention of the Federal Ministry of Health, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, and other relevant health-related authorities. Concern that the cholera outbreak is not even in the federal constituency despite the effort by the state government as the statistics have risen to over 10,000 cases in the last four months, with the over 295 deaths recorded especially in Jigawa State. Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabi Amila said that the House will continue to push for youth inclusion in governance affairs in the country. He gave the assurance when he received a proposal from the All Progressives Congress Youth Lobby Committee in, the, in his office. He said that he remained committed to his advocacy on youth inclusion in governance, adding that Nigerian youth have a lot to offer. Leader of the youth delegation, Ismail Ahmed, said the speaker had shown loyalty, dedication and commitment to the APC as a progressive family. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Solid Minerals to ensure that companies involved in mining activities comply with community development agreements. The resolution followed a motion moved at plenary by Abdullahi Halims on the need to ensure compliance with community development agreements by mining companies exploring coal in Awo, 
Oluku, Okoboa, and Onupi in Angpa Federal constituency of Kogi State. Halims explained that health hazards and implications of coal mining to host communities includes air and water pollution and worried that mining companies' operations in Angpa Federal constituency have not lived up to such agreements. knows that exploration and mining of coal is being carried out by companies such as Dangote and Tazuma operating in 828 different locations including Awo, Olobu, Okobo and Onupi communities in Agba Federal constituency of Kogi State. Aware of the attendant health hazards and implications of coal mining to host communities like air pollution, water pollution, and social dislocation arising from the activities of the mining companies. Also aware of the provisions of Section 116 of the Nigerian Minerals and, Minerals and Mining Act 2007, which stipulates that community development agreements must be signed by the mining companies granted operational licenses. Worried that mining companies operating in Angkwa Federal constituency have not lived up to such agreements, thereby depriving such host communities of maximum benefits of exploration and mining of mineral deposit in their beloved communities. House of Representatives says it will take its time to incorporate and address the concerns expressed by Nigerians in the ongoing amendment of the 1999 Constitution. Spokesman of the House, Benjamin Kalu, said this, said this while briefing newsmen on legislative efforts of the House in the last two years. Would they be automatic? No, they take time. Is that the, polit is the political will there? Yes, it is there. Are we feeling this sense of insecurity? Yes. Are we doing the right thing? We are moving towards the right direction. Are we there yet? No, we are not there yet. So let's be hopeful that the steps we are putting in place will help us get to the Eldorado. On the issue of constitution, like you mentioned, when? It will be difficult to stand here to tell you that maybe the 31st, of December this year, we'll have a new constitution. You have been in this National Assembly long enough to know that just like the PIB took long years, this amendment has taken a long time. But there is the determination and the commitment of the current assembly to ensure that we make an amendment. We may not amend all, but we will take it a step better than where we met it. And uh, a thorough work is being done to see that this piece of legislation, that we get it to reflect the needs of Nigerians. Like I said, we will not sacrifice quality process of making this law on the altar of speed. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. The National Association of Resident Doctors rejects court ruling urging them to suspend the ongoing strike. Do stay with us. Welcome to this edition of 30 Minutes. With me today is the Governor of Kano State, His Excellency Dr. Umar Abdullahi Ganduji. Thank you very much. Are you closely studying your uh, I mean, officials so as to have maybe somebody that you think will better carry on with their legacy. Because we have had situations where governors said, look, I was studying all my officials and I thought that this particular person could best carry on with the legacy that we are leaving behind. Well,
Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust TV News Update. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. We told you that bandits reportedly attacked Tangaza town in Tangaza local government area of Sokoto State, killing two and abducting four children. And Kaduna State Government on Friday confirmed the killing of a community leader, Al Haji Abubakar Abdullahi, in Lere local government area of the state. Still in the news, National Industrial Court in Abuja has ordered National Association of Resident Doctors to immediately suspend the ongoing strike. Justice Bashir al Kali on Friday ruled that the resident doctors must return to work to save human lives, which have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and other diseases. The report. The order followed an interlocutory application brought by the Federal Government of Nigeria and Federal Ministry of Health against the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. Counsel for the striking doctors, Robinson Ario, had asked the court to refuse to grant the prayers of the applicants. No, that was with due respect to the letter sick, as I pointed out to the court. That was a misinformation because the addendum prepared by the government, by the claimants, which was given to our client yesterday, that addendum recognizes that the timelines in the memorandum of understanding signed on the 21st day of August this year, those timelines have lapsed. Meanwhile, counsel for the government, Tochuku Maduka, defended the no work, no pay policy against the doctors. So parties we had it on our own parts and on the part of counsel for the defendants, they considered that um, negotiations had broken down and their lawyers specifically said they were prepared to batch us on the processes before the courts. That were his expert's uh, words. And in view of that, the court proceeded to deliver its ruling and said that the issue of jurisdiction which they had raised in line with uh, case law judicial authorities to that effect and the provisions of the um, rules of the courts that in matters of originating summons when facts are not in dispute that the preliminary objection should be taken together with the substantive application and also being that this is a vacation court with limited time set up to take urgent applications that the court was minded to take a notice of a motion of notice for intellectual injunction so the court took our application motion of notice to restrain the defendants from continuing with the industrial strike and also to compel them to go back to work. The counsel for the defendant respondents opposed that application, and the court in its ruling agreed with us on the issues canvassed and specifically made an order restraining defendants from continuing with the strike and also compelling them to go back to work. It is safe to say that the strike action embarked upon by Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors has officially come to an end, with the Honorable Judge ruling in favor of federal government and ordering the striking resident doctors to resume work with immediate effect. Dashan Husseina Usman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, the National Association of Resident Doctors have rejected the court ruling ordering them to suspend the ongoing strike. It is reported that an industrial court of Nigeria sitting in Abuja on Friday ordered the, stri the, resident, the striking resident doctors across the country to return to work with immediate effect. Justice Bashir al Kali, who gave the ruling, based his judgment on the prevailing health cases of Nigerians and the need for the doctors to resume duties as essential workers in, in curtailing the wave of COVID-19. But narrowed in a statement signed, by, signed jointly by its president, Uilawa Ohiasi, and Secretary General Jerry Isogun, accused the National Industrial Court in Abuja of denying the doctors a fair hearing. Narrowed said it has instructed its lawyers to appeal the ruling and file an application for a stay of execution. The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, has suspended its strike and directed its members at the Enugu Depot to resume 
the supply of petroleum products. The national leadership of IPMAN had on Thursday directed the withdrawal of services at the Enugu loading depot of the NMPC with effect from Friday. The NEC attributed the directive to an alleged attack on the association secretariat at the Enugu depot on Thursday by men of the Nigeria police force. IPMAN members consequently halted the supply of petroleum products to Enugu, Ebony and Anambra states, a situation that caused a significant hike in the pump price of petrol in the states. The pump price of petrol has returned to the regulated price of 165 naira following the suspension of the IPMAN strike. Fauci State Governor Bala Mohamed has called on critical stakeholders and the state civil service to join hands with his administration to revitalize and reinvigorate the service to regain its last glory. The governor made the call at the swearing-in of the newly appointed head of service, Yahuza Adamu Haruna, chairman of the Bauchi State Civil Service Commission, and 22 permanent secretaries. A statement signed and made available to newsmen by the special advisor on media and publicity to the governor, Mukhtar Gidado, informed that Mohammed said the task before the new head of civil service was enormous. He called on Haruna to ensure effective and efficient deployment of personnel and material resources for the implementation of government policies and programs by the various ministries, departments, and agencies in the state. On the international scene, the United States has admitted that a drone strike in Kabul, days before its military pullout, killed 10 innocent people. A U.S. Central Command investigation found that an aid worker and nine members of his family, including seven children, died in the 29th August strike. The deadly strike happened days after a terror attack at Kabul airport amid a frenzied evacuation effort following the Taliban's sudden return to power. It was one of the U.S. military's final acts in Afghanistan before ending its 20-year operation in the country. General Mackenzie described the strike as a tragic mistake and added that the Taliban had not been involved in intelligence that led to the strike. Still on the foreign scene, protesters have taken to the streets of Tunisia's capital in a rare show of public dissent towards President Kai Saeed's move to seize extra powers. The protest, which was met by heavy police presence on Habib Bourguiba Avenue, was the first major demonstration since Saeed declared on July 25 he was sacking the Prime Minister, suspending Parliament and assuming executive authority, moves his opponents branded a coup. The former constitutional leader professor justified his move by citing emergency measures in the constitution that his critics and many legal scholars said did not support his intervention. Political leaders have complained about the constitution since it was agreed in 2014, calling for it to be changed to either a more directly presidential or a more directly parliamentary system. And lastly, in sports news, Frank Onyeka came off the bench as 10-man Brentford stoned Wolvers, Wolverhampton Wanderers in Saturday's Premier League match. The Nigeria midfielder played a role as the Bees grabbed their second league win of the season. The 23-year-old replaced Sagi Kanos in the 68th minute, four minutes after Shandon Baptiste was given his marching orders after his second yellow card. The outing was Onyeka's third Premier League appearance of the season, following his permanent switch from Midland in August. We've come to the end of Trust TV News Update. Do well to follow us across all of our social media platforms for more news. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for watching.
Looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress. 